Four years after this debate, the Senate of Canada established the Special Committee on Illegal Drugs in April two th year 2000 to study this important matter, to intelligently provide information to Canadians, and to recommend appropriate reform in order to develop a Canadian solution on cannabis and other psychoactive substances. The committee heard more than 200, uh, 200 witnesses, including ordinary Canadians, and rigorously analyzed a phenomenal number of scientific studies on the many facets of, problems, of the problems involved in cannabis. We also evaluated the policies developed by countries like the United States of America, the Netherlands, Germany, France, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, and Australia, and organized public hearings in eight major Canadian cities. We had also commissioned 16 focus groups to evaluate more accurately the qualitative opinion of Canadians. The committee released its report on September 4th of last year. The basic argument underlying our report is the following. In a free and democratic society like Canada's, citizens ought to have the right to make informed decisions about their behavior on condition that they do not cause undue harm to others. And the state must favor such autonomous responsibility. We firmly believe that cannabis use falls into this category of substance. We concluded that this substance is less harmful than tobacco and alcohol, both of which are legal. We question why should it not be treated in the same manner. Nevertheless, we establish that in the name of public public health protection, public intervention was needed. So we rejected the free market. Even though we acknowledge that the excessive use of cannabis involves health risks, we found no valid reason to use criminal law beyond repression of criminal trafficking as a means of protecting public health in this case. Since the reports, the reports released, the media and the U.S. administration authorities have focused primarily on the recommendation that proposes regulating the use and sale of cannabis. Some have accused us of brazenly promoting cannabis, particularly from young people, for young people, or eliminating society's last bastion uh, against the risk of an apprehended increase in the use of this drug or other more harmful illegal substances. To such criticism, I would reply that our recommendations needs to be evaluated in the context of the other recommendations in the report. We do not encourage the use of cannabis or other psychoactive substances. We are not encouraging the creation of an open air toxic waste site or drug mini marts, to use the words of the National UN uh, Drug Control Policy. We, see, we simply want governments to be accountable and to empower citizens with respect to the cannabis use phenomenon and all other drugs. Having said that, it is clear for the committee that legislation, particularly criminal legislation, is only one of the tools of, of a global, effective, and respectful policy, public policy on all psychoactive substances. After having carefully studied these issues, I am convinced that it is essential for Canada to develop an integrated national strategy on the use of all psychoactive substances based on objective guiding principle on ethics, governance, criminal law, and science. Adequate funding level are essential to strengthen our understanding of the patterns of use and impact of drugs, thereby making it possible to create and implement innovative prevention and treatment programs and strict evaluation and monitoring mechanisms. 
Once the reach of these ambitious objectives has been engaged, the federal and provincial governments could establish a regulatory framework governing the use and production of cannabis. I am, I am referring here to the concept of legalization with strong government control. As you see for the committee, legalization of cannabis does not, need, does not mean establishing free market environment for drugs like some are arguing. Over the coming years, pressure from the courts might force the government of Canada to redefine its illegal drug policy to bring it in line with Canadian society, compassion, tolerance, and respect for individual freedom, for example, rather than the myth, myths of the past. In Canada, we cherish, in our Bill of Rights, we call it the Charter of Rights, we cherish the independence and the, the impartiality of our courts. We cherish that and it's the responsibility of Parliament to protect that. Let us not forget that in July 2000, the Ontario Court of Appeal, it is the highly, in its highly publicized Parker decision, ruled that the provision, provision of the Controlled Drug and Substance Act was unconstitutional because it prevented people from using cannabis for therapeutic purposes. Indeed, with respect to those suffering from serious illnesses, who used a drug to alleviate pain. The court said that cannabis use posed much less of a health risk than cannabis prohibition. Prohibition was, in fact, contrary to the principles of fundamental justice enshrined in Section 7 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. This historic decision was not appealed to the Supreme Court of Canada by the federal government. Consequently, it forced the Department of Health to adopt regulations in July 2001 to authorize the production and use of cannabis for therapeutic purposes. Even though this initiative was roundly condemned by the United States, it was in no way inconsistent with inter international conventions, which already provided for such exemption in order to comply with the specific legal and constitutional characteristic of the signatory countries.